Well, amen, amen. Everybody good? Everybody good? You all served? You got your seconds, your thirds, fourths? Amen? <laughs> Just make sure we take care of it. We got a good balance today. We got some healthy stuff. We got some sweet stuff, everything. So enjoy it, enjoy it. Amen? Got to make sure we handle all that before we go. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, again, thank you so much for being here today. I'm um, really looking forward to going over the scripture together today as we as we focus on what the Lord has for us. And uh, so we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. Amen. So we're going to be turning our Bibles today to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. Um, I'll be in the uh, English Standard Version. So whatever version you're in, feel free to use. Um, but uh, if you put it called, uh, we'll go from there. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. If you forget, it's right on the little uh, notebooks, amen, that we had over there. So if you didn't get one of these notebooks, we have, I have some up here, so make sure you guys take them, amen? Or if you want to bless somebody with one or something like that, feel free to do so too as well. Praise God. Amen, amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for your word today, Lord. We thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, for this word that you have given us for this year. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, it's your word, my God, and it does not return back void, but will accomplish the purpose for which you sent it, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word that you gave us last year that leads us into this word to this year, Lord. And we just ask you, Father God, to help us, Lord Jesus, to receive it by your Holy Spirit. Father God, as you bring forth today your word, Lord, let it be your spirit, Father, that speaks not my own words, but yours, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, as we come together in submission and unity, Lord, in you, Lord. We thank you for this time together, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this is the scripture that the Lord gave us for the year as a church together. And a lot of times it's, it's, uh, it might seem like, well, we haven't really talked about the scripture, different things like that. But honestly, it's a word that God gives us because it's not only just hearing it, but it's also walking it out and living it. And trusting God at times when you see th things are going on, not just in the church, but in our own lives, we're able to kind of reflect on that. Well, God, this is what you're teaching us through it. Because how many of us know that God will give us a word, but then we, now we got to walk out that word. Right. Now we got to live it out. Now that's where, the, that's where it really comes to life because we start to see the word of God in action. And I'll tell you that, uh, you know, the, the scripture from last year when Peter cried out, save me, man. You know, it was like, I've used that so much, you know, walking, you know, taking that step of faith. And then like, man, what am I doing? You know, just so many different things and so many oppositions, different things, the waves, all of that. But yet knowing, he says, do not be afraid. I'm with you, you know, and Christ bringing us through. And I believe that as a church, we really grew from that. And so today, this is just more kind of an overview to be able to read it together, to be able to be on the same page together. Um, as we continue these services, the communion services, um, this will be kind of like the background, kind of the foundation of it, but we will be going into the gifts of the Spirit. So we'll be learning those as we go forward, but just remember, this is our foundational scripture to place us there of why we're doing that, amen? So just felt that was very important because I believe that God is leading us and guiding us through it. So even though we're not always hitting on this scripture, this scripture is very close to heart. And I encourage you that as today is just an overview, I encourage you to take the time and go back and to study it yourself, to dig into it. And believe me, just one verse, man, you can be there forever. I mean, as I was studying yesterday, I could have just stayed on verse one and did a whole teaching. It's just there's so much in there. But not so much that you don't need if you study it, but just read it for yourself. And allow the Lord to speak to you through it. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you and to guide you through it. Amen? And I'm sure that as this year goes on, you'll, you'll hear that we can continue to reference these scriptures constantly because it's a part of what God is doing in this house as we as a church together as a people. But not just in New Living Way Church, the church in general. Amen? So this is what God's really called us to do. So I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to kind of break it down a little bit here. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. It says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of, worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. 
And saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, for whom, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Amen. So that's a lot, right? <laughs> that's, that's a lot right there. Praise God. So we're going to go back and we're going to break this down a little bit. And if you've been in Bible study, this is kind of what we do here. Amen. So if there's a question, you want to add something, the Lord give you something. So just feel free just to let me know, raise your hand and I'll call on you and we'll share this together. Amen. So, but like I said, this is kind of an overview just to kind of go through it because again, everything we're going to be doing is going to be basically launch, just like a launch pad. Amen. So, <laughs> all right. So let's look back at verse one here. It says, I therefore a prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So this is Paul right here. Paul is talking about, he's actually in prison. Okay, It's not just he's a bond servant of Christ, nothing. No, he's literally in prison. Yeah. And he's in prison because he's been declaring the gospel, because he's sharing the good news of Jesus. And so he's been betrayed, he's been rejected, he's been beaten, you know, he's been shipwrecked, he's been through a bunch of stuff. And now he's in prison for basically preaching the gospel. For doing the work of the Lord. So he's basically wrongfully in prison, but regardless, he's still in there. But even in his imprisonment, Paul is still encouraging the church. Yeah. Paul is using the situation he's in. And, and think about it this way. Today's prisons, I mean, compared to the prisons back then, these prisons are like luxury hotels. I mean, they were literally in dark caves. They were literally in places that were, they were next to their own feces. I mean, there was, you know, there was no running toilets or nothing like that. I mean, this was some ugly situations to be in prison, okay? And so this is, this is a, I mean, I can't imagine the place that he was in in this time. But yet, because of his call, he didn't allow that to keep him from continuing to encourage the church, from continuing to do what he was called to do, because not only was he a prisoner in, in literally in jail, but he was also a bondservant of Christ, he knew he had a call, a reason, and a purpose, so he would use that situation to say, even in our darkest moments, we could still declare the love of God. Amen? Amen? Church, you still have an issue, and even though I'm here, you're not here, so that means you can continue to do the work. Amen. And there are times in our lives that we're not able to do the same things we used to do. We're not able to go the same, whatever it may be, but we know that others can. Amen? Amen. And this is where the Lord raises us up to continue the work. Praise God? Amen. You know, over 80 years, this church has continued to go, and that's not just because it's been one person. It's been multiple people coming together because it's God's plan. Amen. It's God's plan. Amen. It's his purpose. It's his, his church because of the work that is going forth. So our responsibility is that we continue to know that, God, you have a reason and a purpose. And so he says this from this place, and he says, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. To, to say in the manner is to re refer to as being worthily. Not because we deserved it, but because we are thankful. So to walk in this, do we count it an honor and a privilege today to be called by Christ? Yes. Yes. To be yes. saved by the blood of Jesus? Yes. Do we count it an honor and a privilege today to be in the house of God? Yes. To be able to rejoice and to praise God for all that he's done. That should be our lives daily. That is the manner that we are called to live because we do it because we're thankful to God. Not because we feel we have to. Not because it's, well, it's the right thing to do. Well, at least if I show that I'm good, then people will like me or whatever it may be. No. We do this because we're thankful because of what he's done for us. Yes. Amen. It's a privilege to know the truth. Amen. Yes. Our eyes are open. You yes. Know, amen. That? We're able to see things um, that the world may not see. You know, we're able to just have the Holy Spirit guide us. Praise God. Amen. A lot of people have that. So it is a blessing and it is a privilege to have.
have the Holy Spirit and to know who God is and to believe in what he did for us on the Jesus Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah, because you could hear news and we all receive the same news, right? You know, like the, the, what is it, the, the news I just saw yesterday that they gave us a warning in California about the foreshock and there's supposed to be an earthquake between today and tomorrow or something like that, you know? And the world, you could be afraid of that, like, what do you mean? What? What? And don't get afraid, okay? It's, <laughs> but in Christ, we know who's in control. That was a good example, I guess, huh? Got a little shook. You don't see that, okay. What will be over tomorrow? But we can trust God. Amen? Yes, it could be a little fearful, like, oh, man, earthquake. But at the same time, we know who our God is. Amen? Amen. We know that we can trust him and that no matter what's on the news, we can come to him. And even in our, if we're afraid and we do have fear, we can acknowledge that fear and then come to Christ and say, Lord, help us through this fear. Amen. And that is the honor and privilege that we have because there are many today that don't have that. So they turn to so many other things because they don't know how to deal with the fear, with the trauma, with the the, you know, all the things that go on. So it is an honor and a privilege. And again, we can be thankful for that because we can come and pray together. Amen? Yeah. We can come and trust God together. We can come and hear the word of God to encourage us. The Amplified Version says that is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and a mature behavior. A life that expresses gratitude to God for our salvation. It's not a life of perfectness, perfectness, but thankfulness to God because of what he's done for us. And it makes us deserving because of our faith in him. Because when we miss it, we realize it's not dependent upon us, but he calls us and he makes the change in our lives. It doesn't mean we don't take responsibility for our actions. It doesn't mean that we don't take responsibility for our decisions and our choices. But we do acknowledge that, God, I am completely undeserving of this. I didn't do anything to deserve you. Yeah. But yet you did everything for me, and that's why it is a gift. Amen? So it's continuing to live this life realizing that I didn't earn this. I didn't earn the right and the privilege to know God. It's a gift. And since it's a gift, I can rejoice. I can live freely knowing that, God, you did it for me. You did it for us. And even though I see others that still don't know you, but Lord, you did it for them. So there was an opportunity still for them to know God. So I have to be careful that I don't knock them down because there's still, there's still hope. Amen. And Jesus That's is right. that hope. Amen. Because I didn't do anything that made me better to know God. I put my faith in Christ, so that means they can put their faith in Christ. Amen. And even if it's like that man on the cross Amen. where Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise at that last breath to know. You know, and he still went through some stuff because his legs were broken, right? Yes. But he died knowing that he would be in the presence of the Lord Amen. because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. So this is when he's telling us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling, live our lives being thankful, thankful to God for our salvation. Out of everything, thankful to God for our salvation. That'll keep me and you humble. That'll keep me and you in the right place. Yeah, really. Because we're not dependent upon ourselves or anybody else. We're dependent upon him and him alone. Right. So in the highest times, you're like, wow, God, thank you so much. To God be the glory. Amen. And our lowest times, man, I messed up. But God, thank you. To you be the glory. Amen. Because it doesn't matter where we're at in life. It doesn't change the fact that we have salvation in him. Amen. Verse 2 says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another, in love. So how do we walk out in this manner worthy of the calling to which we've been called? With all humility. In this time, in that time, the world, and honestly, it's still today, humility was, in the pagan world, was shown as a sign of weakness. It wasn't respected. If you were humble, you were not respected. You were meant to be prideful. It was a matter of your reputation, your wisdom, your strength, your looks, whatever it may have been. That's not today, right? But back then it was. It was all based on status. So to hear, to be, to be humble, to have humility was not very popular. And honestly, it's still not popular today, even in the church. Because we can, be, we can get caught up sometimes in our prideful ways, in our self-righteous ways. When we start to look at others as insignificant, as we start to look at others, well, you're just a sinner. 
But reality is, we're all, we were all sinners, amen? But that's why Christ died for the sins of the world. So he's saying to live this out in a manner, and one of those ways, humility, modest, a deep sense of one's moral littleness. A deep sense of one's moral little, littleness, realizing I don't have it all together, and neither do you. I don't meet the standard of God, and neither do you. But in Christ we do. And it's because of Christ Amen. that we are able to be righteous in him. But that's the sign of humility. Amen. That's the remembrance because, Lord, I'm only here because I'm thankful for the salvation that I have in you. This keeps us in humility, and it keeps us and helps us to forsake self-righteousness. Because when you look at Israel, Israel was very self-righteous. And we as a church sometimes can be very self-righteous if we're not careful. We call things out, yes, we stand for truth, definitely, but we never put ourselves in a place that it could not happen to me or you. Because he, take, he says, take heed lest you fall. We all have to know, we can never say, oh, that would never happen to me, I would never do that. Careful. <laughs> so, take the humble road. Because you might be doing it already and not even realize it. But because I'm so focused on you, the log is blocking me from seeing myself. So we have to be careful. Humility. See yourself for who you really are. Amen? I know we don't like to do that sometimes, but how many of us just got to be honest with ourselves sometimes? I got to really see who I really am. I got to look in that mirror and really just see myself for who I am. And, and I tell you, get to that place like, Paul, man, how wretched I am. But thanks be to God. Amen? Amen? Thanks be to God. I'm not saying you walk, oh, woe's me all the time. No, no. We re but remember what Christ has done for us. This keeps us in a humble place. He says gentleness, self-control, maintaining that self-control, that meekness. Amen? How many of you already overcome self-control? You guys got it all together. Okay, I was going to say you're lying. <laughs> so, praise God. Amen. Thanks. For, yeah, all right. Amen. Amen. If you, didn't, you didn't say anything, but I got your word. I got you. Amen. We all struggle. It's, 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 it's going to be a lifelong battle, right? But again, we strive for it. This one I know you all love patience. <laughs> but I, I remember the first time I heard this word patience, right? Patience is, is one thing, but in other translations, it says long suffering. And I was like, when I, when I, when I, somebody brought that out, and I was like, no, but they were reading out the King James Version, it said long suffering. Oh, and they say, you know what that means? It means long suffer. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Because that means it's going to be long. <laughs> and suffering. And suffering. Why'd you have to bring that up, Brother Dennis? <laughs> but it is, it is crazy how that can work, but that's part of it. He says this is part of our walk. But it also comes with endurance, consistency, perseverance. It's that realizing that, you know what, we may not have arrived yet, but we're not going to arrive here. Nope. But realizing that we're a process, and in that process, God is faithful to that work. He's began the work, and he will complete it. Amen. But that takes patience, because we want it no. now. I want it to be over tomorrow. I want it to be done. Lord, you gave me a microwave, it's quick. Toaster takes too long, but you know we want it fast, but God doesn't work that way. So he's saying to be patient, just because we don't see the fruits or the works come out, but it's to be patient, and sometimes, many times, that's considered long-suffering. And, and if we're really honest with ourselves, we all have errors in our life, and sometimes there's probably more than one that we have been long-suffering through it, but we're trusting God. Because he's faithful. No matter what battles you face or go through, just trust God. He's going to bring you through. You belong to him. It's not you that keeps yourself in place. It's him. Amen. Not only that, he says, bearing with one another. Bearing with one another. Okay, this calls us as a church. This is all together as a body. This is what we're to do. How we live a manner worthy of the calling is all these things. But then he goes on to say, bearing with one another to endure, to suffer, to sustain for one another in a love that is unselfish. That agape love, that selfless love. God's love, not ours. But how can we do this? How can we bear with one another constantly? How can we bear with those around us all the time? It's not easy. <laughs> 
But when we can stay in that place of mind that we're thankful to God for bearing with us every day, yep. then it helps us to bear with one another. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Because, Lord, if you could put up with me, <laughs> then I can put up with them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be honest with God. This is the only way that we're able to grow together. This is the only way that we can, can, can love one another is because it's from a thankful heart for what Christ has done for us. None of us are here yet. And will we be here at the end of 2024? No. Let's, you know, let's, but no. We trust the Lord through it. And this is what the call is. And he goes on to verse 3, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You notice it doesn't say to create unity. It doesn't say to make unity. Yeah, that's good. It doesn't say you better get to unity. No, he says, but to maintain unity. This is the goal, is to be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. To maintain, to watch, to guard, to observe, to attend to, to take care of. Our responsibility in Christ today, as what we're doing today, is we're maintaining the unity. God brought us together in this annex room for these communion services to help us to maintain the unity by the Spirit of God and the bond of peace, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus. Because how many of us know that it is Christ that binds me and you together today? Yes. Amen. That's what binds me and you together here today. I mean... We're grateful for all the, the snacks that came in. Amen? Amen. Amen? But it's not the snacks that bind us together. Well, they can, but it's temporal, right? <laughs> Amen? But the true unity of it is that we're bound together today because of the unity in Christ. And as we, as we continue to trust this word, then what happens is that we're maintaining the unity that is in Christ. Because he is the head. He's the one that keeps us together. He's the one that holds us together. And so this is what our responsibility as a church is going to continue to be, is to maintain that unity in the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And not only here, but all of our brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? All of our brothers and sisters. We don't want to be attacking one another. We don't want to be going after one another because of different thoughts and opinions. Do you believe in Jesus? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Did he raise again on the third day? Is he coming back soon? Then you know what? You're my brother. You're my sister. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's maintain that unity together. Any thoughts, comments, anything, input on that? I'm trying to figure out a word in here. He's not asking us to long suffer because he doesn't. He long suffered before and he's with us now, probably. I know, right? Yeah. You ever think God's up there and he just, oh, there he goes again. Yeah. There she goes again. I don't think he does it, but you know, who knows, right? <laughs> I'm looking at it from my standards, right? Because we look at our kids, you know, oh, there we go. Yeah, there they go again, you know? We're looking at our families. We're looking at each other. We're looking at spouses, right? We're looking at our, our, our family and stuff. Oh, there we go again. Here we go. Same thing. But no matter what, God is long-suffering with us, Amen. Not only that, but a world that rejects him constantly. Yes, Brother Gabriel. I remember when I first started to come to church, my cousin, now I understand that God drew, God did the drawing, you know, I believe that God, after that, as soon as the fish that was thrown, and I bit on it, that was God tugging in my heart. Amen. But what drew me here, I'm, a, I'm not going to, my, my cousin said, well, we're going to eat barbecue after at church. So that's what drew me here. <laughs> amen. <laughs> like, I like, praise you know, God. Like, you know, like, it's reality. I'm just being real. Yeah, know, yeah, no, right. amen. I, my, my, my incentive, the incentive for me to come was to get barbecue. Well, we'll treat you to eat after. I was like, praise God. I didn't even say praise God at that time. I was like, all right, let's go. You know, I like barbecue. And nothing got me here, but you know what? God set me up. 
Amen. And God set us up. He has his right. ways to do things, man. It may be you know what I mean? God has his way. He knows exactly who you are and how to get you. He knows what we like, brother. He knows, he knows what we like. <laughs> man, and it's through, through the teachings and through just sitting down and him just having his way, I was able to make God at the work. Amen. Amen. How was the barbecue, God brother? That was the barbecue after. Oh, the barbecue. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's three minutes, it's even better. <laughs> amen, amen. And that's what it is, right? But I just thank for it. Amen, amen. I know, we went out to eat the other day, and for some reason, man, the food just tasted so great. It was so good, right? It was just like, man, I never, it was Shakey's. And, you know, I, yeah, I fell, I fell. And um, I was eating Shakey's, but oh, it was so good. But then we thought about it. We didn't pay for it. Uh -oh. And it was so good, maybe because it was free. Amen? Amen? It was paid for already. Amen? But how many of us know that's what Christ did for us? Amen? He paid it all already. And that gift is free, so we can enjoy it. Amen? And so, you know what? But, hey, you know what? Invite somebody to church. Let them know, especially in these communions, there is always snacks. There is always some food over here. Amen? And that will get them here. And then let the Word of God does, does do what it needs to do. Amen? So we're going to look over here at verse 4, and we're going to look through verse 4 and 6. Now it says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Amen? Amen. So how many of us know there's not multiple bodies? Nope. There's not different nationalities of bodies? There's not different cultures of bodies. <laughs> There's not different languages of bodies. But the Bible says that we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it doesn't matter what part of the world we're from or where the rest of the people in Christ, we are all one in him. Amen. We're all called to the same call because of the same hope. Amen? Amen. Now, is the gospel different in China? No. no. Is the gospel different in Europe? Is the gospel different in Mexico? No. Is the gospel different in Southgate? No. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you thought about that one. No. <laughs> no, the gospel is the gospel about Jesus Christ. We can fly to the moon, right? You can go out to space. The gospel will still be the gospel about Jesus Christ because he's Lord of the heavens. He is Lord over all. And there is no different. There is no separation because it's all one hope. Amen. And this is where we have to be strong in realizing that we are together one in Christ Jesus. Yes, we have, like Sister Jerry said, I love our individuality. And that is a blessing, right? Because we're all different individuals. We're all different. But yet God brings us all together in this melting pot and says we're all one in him. And not only that, we function together as a body of Christ together. No matter what our background is, no matter who we are, what language we speak, we're all one in Christ. Amen. Because that's how great our God is. And so we need to be watchful. We need to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, recognizing that we're one in Christ. We're all one body. We're called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in. Let's keep it simple, okay? Amen. Verse 7 says, But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Grace being that undeserved favor. If he called you to it, he graced you for it. You have, if you have said yes to God, then you must know that, in, that you must already know it is only because of his grace we can actually follow him. We can actually seek him. We can actually serve him today. Because whatever God has called you to, and me to do, he has graced me and you to do it. And that grace may always feel like, well, that means I'm always going to have the power of God. No, it's also the power of God in our weakness. It's also the power of God when we trip up. It's also the power of God when we're, we're, we're struggling. But it's also the power of God when we're just trusting and believing him. Because he graces us for that position, for that place, for that moment in our lives to serve him. There is nothing that goes in in our life that is a shock to God. He's not surprised, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. 
I can't believe he said that. <laughs> what is he doing? But it hurts his heart. It does, yes, of course. But he's still good. And that's why he graces us. But it only comes from the place of humility. It only comes from the place that we continue to be thankful for God because that's when we're able to see these things so he can work it out, so we can trust him to know that his grace is sufficient. Amen. That you don't have to go back. You don't have to, to, to give up. No, keep going. Trust God, but repent. Come to the Lord. Submit to him. Allow him to lead me and guide you and direct me and you together and trust him through it. And if you feel you don't have what it takes to do it, none of us do. That's why it's called undeserved favor. Amen. You didn't call yourself. I didn't call you. He called you. Amen. He called me. Amen. And because he called us, his word says that his grace is sufficient. Amen. He'll put you in a place. I shared last year about, you know, about my testimony, and it said, don't make sense. Uh, I told God, Lord, why did you place me in this place? I don't make sense to me. <laughs> I shouldn't be here. I'm not a people person. I'm a shy person. I like to be in the background. I don't like to be seen. <laughs> I just want to come in and that's it. But God doesn't always do things that make sense, right? Doesn't make our sense. Doesn't make our sense, exactly. But we can trust him. So even if it doesn't make sense to you, it makes sense to him. Because it's his plan and his purpose that he has for your life. And he knew you before the foundations of the world. He predestined you. Amen? So we can trust him through it. And in that, don't be afraid to say yes to God. Because we know that his grace is sufficient for you. Just trust him when you say yes. And you'll see. He is so merciful. And his grace is so great. Amen? Amen. The grace saved you. Amen? It saved me and you. Yeah. So his grace will also bring me and you through. Yeah. Thoughts, comments. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, to get, if you're taking notes, you can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10, where it talks about Paul, right? Saying, take this thorn from my side, right? Yeah. Lord, just remove it. I asked him three times, remove it. The devil was given this thing to torment me day and night. And he said, take it away from me. But God told him, no. My power is made great in your weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. So that thorn may be uncomfortable. But God's got it there for a reason because it says it was given to Paul to keep him from being coming conceited because of the great vision that he had. Amen. That keeps sometimes God knows how to keep me and you humble. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let me ask you, are you proud to be humble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, amen, amen. <laughs> Praise God. You got that then, right? Yeah, I did. Amen. So verse 8. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men and saying he ascended. What does it mean that but that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Now, he's quoting Psalm 68, verse 18, and it says that he gave gifts from the spoils of his victory on the cross and his resurrection. Amen. Psalm is talking about the spoils of victory, but right here it's talking about Christ's victory on the cross and resurrection. And these gifts he has poured out to the church because of that victory today. And we are the beneficiaries. Amen? Amen. We're the ones that are blessed because of it. In some translation it says, and he gave gifts to men and women. Amen? Amen. So that's for all of us. Praise God. He opened, he tore down the veil. He tore down the walls so that everyone can have the opportunity to serve him. Amen? These gifts are for everyone, man and woman. And a gift is paid for, not earned. Sometimes not even deserved. But it's given. And because it's given, we can be thankful for all that he has done. Amen? And instead of asking God, well, I don't get it, let's just be thankful for it. Amen? Just receive it. Just receive it. Be thankful for the gift. Because when we start to question the gift too much, the giver starts to, doesn't make the giver feel good, right? <laughs> doesn't make, man, I shouldn't even got you there. <laughs> but when you see the gift being enjoyed, it, it just becomes such a joy, amen? So let's continue to utilize that and continue to trust God through it. Verse 11 says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers. 
the apostles to establish God's word in churches, the prophets to speak the message of God directly to the people for that time, the evangelists spreading the gospel throughout the world, pastors and teachers to take care of the home, to build a solid foundation, to shepherd, um, to shepherd and instruct God's people to their purpose, to build them up. Amen? But all these gifts, these five part of the fivefold ministry are part for the church. This is what it's for. Amen? And you may have that call upon your life. That call is in your life, but can I tell you something? It's not glamorous. No. <laughs> the fivefold ministry was never meant to be glamorous. You want to know why? Because it says that the, the fivefold ministry is a gift to the church. You know what people do with a gift? They use it for their benefit. They use it because it's there for them to be used. It is a blessing and an honor. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it. But it is a cost. But thank God for the grace to do it. Amen? Amen. But it's nothing to ever take into effect. Well, I'm an apostle. I'm an evangelist. You know, and I've heard so many stories of people that got the name tags and they're everything. <laughs> You know, I remember was it was uh, Dr. Dan, Dan Bennett. He said he met somebody, and they had all five of them on the, on the thing. He says, oh, nice to meet you, Jesus. <laughs> because the reality of it is none of us have everything. We're all called to do in part. But see, when we start to trust man, because let me tell you something, that call is not of man. It is of God. Because if someone is not called by God, then it'll become something else. But when that individual is called by God, God will grace that individual to do what God has called them to do. Where's the division between pastor and apostle? I don't understand that. Like, what makes the guy? A, well, the I, apostle. He's an apostle here, but mm -hmm. how did he become an apostle? I, I don't. I just don't get it. Apostles can move around. I mean, it's all the same, but the apostles will move around a little bit more. You know, they'll, they'll go from place to place, as Paul did, and the disciples. They would okay. build up, they would establish, they would build up others, and then they would move on. And the pastor so, yeah, the pastor would stay in-house, and okay. the teachers That's to continue to instruct. Okay. Amen. Amen. And there's a lot of thoughts, a lot of different, you know, different things on it, but reality is, is that it's all for God's work as a gift to the church. And we're going to look at that here in verse, um, verse 11. I'm sorry, verse 12. This is the reason for the gift. This is the reason for the fivefold ministry, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. That's right. It's not to build up my reputation. It's not to build up a person. It's not to build up a church, a just one building church. The reason for the fivefold ministry is to equip God's people. To equip is to perfect, to furnish, to supply with necessary items for a particular purpose, mental, mental, physical, but we know here it's spiritual. For the ministry to serve. A minister is a servant. That's the true meaning of minister, is a servant. To build up the church, the body of Christ. Not to make a name for oneself or a certain church, but to make a, to show Christ. That's what church is all about. That's what it's supposed to be about, is to build up to a church, to equip you, to equip the saints, to equip God's people, his children, what is necessary for the church to be built up in faith, in Christ, in him alone. God bless you. It's for the building up of the body of Christ. Amen. That's what God's word does. And that's what we are to do. And that's supposed to be the focus is that to realize is that the word of God is equipping me and you for such these times today, right? There are so many changes today. But we are standing today because of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're trusting God and his word. But not only that, it's also to serve. Oh, you got quiet on me. Amen. Okay. All right. But we're called to serve. Right? Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to serve. And that's what we do is we serve one another. And everything that we do, 
because we do it in humility because we're thankful for Christ of what he's done for us. It's to build us up t together, but trusting God through it. But you have to ans answer the call. You have to make the commitment. You have to trust God through it. And that's why I said, if you've said yes, and I believe you have, but if you've truly said yes to God to serve him, then you know that his grace is sufficient to bring you through. Amen? Yes. In every aspect of your life, in everything that you do, not just in the house of God, but in your life and our lives in general. It's everything. You know, I saw Nancy the other day, and I'm just going to bring that on, Nancy, but she said that there was this a gentleman that just was upon her heart, and she went and just talked to him as a servant, doing what God has called you to do. Brother Fernando, thank you, brother. He fixed our lights out here. But because God was telling him to. He surprised me, man. Texted me out of nowhere, said, hey, we want to come over. We want to fix these lights. I haven't turned off like in two years. And they came down, him and his friend, and they fixed it. I said, Lord, I wasn't even, I didn't even have any plans to do it. He says, my house, I'll take care of it. Amen. But it's up to me and you to answer the call, to be obedient, to trust him. Because we all have the call, amen? amen? Verse 13 says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. How long will we, we must do this? Until we attain the unity of the faith. To come to, to arrive. We're not going to arrive here, church, right? And not unless the Lord tarries. But when the Lord comes, that's when we're done. So the work is, is done when it's done, Amen. How many of us know there's no clock out? There's no punching in and out, man. I tried. It didn't take. I said no connection. No Wi-Fi. <laughs> no Wi-Fi, yeah, exactly. No wi there is no clocking out, church. We continue to do what God has called us to do. Until we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we can mature together. Verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, and deceitful schemes. So we're not fooled by anything else that is not Christ. So we're not fooled by anything else that is not Christ. But the only way to know what is false is to know what is truth. That's the only way. Because if not, then we'll be fooled by anything. And there are so many things out there today that seem like it's Christ. But unless you know the truth, you can be deceived, and so can I. Amen. We need to be careful, church. Just because it's got a Christ label on it doesn't mean it's always Jesus. Because the Bible says there will be a lot of false Christs, a lot of false teachers, prophets, a lot of falseness going on. And this is nothing new. It's been going on for forever. Amen. It's being talked about here. But today we need to be careful. But this comes from, again, from a place of humility, of thankfulness for knowing who Christ is. A church that is still declaring who Christ is, talking about Jesus. Verse 15 says, Rather speaking the truth than love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Speaking the truth in love into full submission unto God. Using the word of God to build up, not to tear down. Now truth is truth. The Proverbs say wounds from a friend can be trusted. Amen? Sometimes it may hurt. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. Sometimes it comes from somebody you're like, who the heck are you to tell me anything? But when God is speaking, sometimes you use the ones you don't want speaking to you. Amen. But if it's truth, then it's truth. Amen? I shared many years ago that one of my mom's boyfriends, man, got in my face. If I could have taken him, I would have, but he was much bigger than I was. <laughs> so I sat there and I listened. And, you know, like next day, he ended up in prison, but whatever. <laughs> but in that moment, he got in my face and he told me what I needed to hear. And as mad as I was, I couldn't hide the fact that it was truth. And what I did is I used that anger to make a change in my life, to do what needed to be done. See, even God was speaking to me then. It wasn't the matter of the person bringing it. It was a fact it was still truth. Amen? Amen. 
but we do it in love. We do it in the understanding that, you know what, none of us have it all together. But in Christ, this is, we can't change the word of God. His word is his word. But there is mercy, there is grace, there is long-suffering, patience. There is all these things in Christ that, you know what, he's not going to stop loving you. Verse 16 here, the last verse, from the, whole, from the whole body, joined and held together by every joint which, with is, and with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Wow. This is our key verse here. If we're one body, one spirit, if we're willing to follow Christ and allow God to build us up in this way, this is where we're supposed to go, that we will be joined together held together by every joint which, which it is equipped, that we will hold together, we hold each other together. By continuing to do what God has called us to do, by where he's equipped us. And when it says, when each part is working properly, not because we're doing it perfectly, but because we're trusting God through it, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is where we are, as not just New Living Way Church, but I believe our prayer needs to be today for the church today that we need to pray for the church to build itself up in love. Amen. Who is love? God, God is love. Amen? Love God is love. And this is, needs to be our prayer today as a church, that the church will build itself up in love so that that love can be shown in this world, so that the world can see the love of God and the true love of God through his church. As his word says, they will know you are deci my disciples by the love that you have for one another. That's what we need to be about, church. The gifts are great, all these things, but they're all used to build the church up in love, that agape love. God's love, the sacrificial love, the, govi the, the giving of love. And this comes from a life that is thankful and willing to see people, the church, and Jesus' love. Only then can we do so. But I just wrote here, Lord, help us to be built up in love and to do as you have called us to do. That is the only way. Because it's that love that saved me. It is that love that is continuing to save people today because it's a love like no other. Did you have your hand up, Brother Santos? I, yeah, I was, um, where it says, joint held together by every joint, <coughs> by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, it makes the body grow. That was just, um, um, like I've been, this past week I've been going constantly to the gym and one of my joints kind of hurt, right? Um, but, it's like when you do uh, an exercise in the gym, you know, you do it with the purpose of your muscle being exercised and, and to grow. But if your joint hurts, you won't be able to do the full range of the movement in order to make the muscle grow completely. And it, and it just kind of reminded me of that, is that the, the joints need to be working, need to be completely working so that that, that, that body part, that muscle will be able to grow. Amen. So if the joint is like it's hurt, you won't be able to do the full range of motion and it won't give the growth that it needs. And it applies likewise in the church. Amen. Amen. And we got to be patient through the soreness, right? Patient and the, the healing, soreness, right? right? That's good. We got to be patient through the soreness and the healing. Amen. Because there are times in our walk as well that we are healing. Yeah. We're sore. We're growing. So it's the patience with one another, like, hey, you know what? It's okay. Just keep going. Don't worry. We're, We're going to come through this together. We can't all expect to be, because when one is high, one is low, we got to be able to hold each other up. Amen? Because that's what we do. Many hands lighten the load. Amen? Amen? So when we work together, we can trust him through it. But it's all, again, done in that love of God, because of the love that he has for us. That's what he talks about in this chapter right before this. He says that they would be rooted in his love that they, they would just be strengthened through it, and that they would know that there is not, not another love like that. That's our, our youth ministry scripture, amen? amen? Found in Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to close with this scripture here in 1 Corinthians as we get ready to take communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You all know this one. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 4 through 13 here. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. 
It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails or ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen? Amen. In case you're wondering what our word is next month. Love. 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 <laughs> amen, amen. You know, that's how you got to do it right there, right? <laughs> our word for next month will be love, amen? Because before we get into the gifts, the greatest gift, none of those gifts are worth anything, right? Without love, without love amen? So then we're going to start off there. And not only that, I was like, hey, it's February, right? So that's like the month of love, amen? <laughs> It should be every month and every day, but you know what I mean, right? So that'll be our word for next, our, our word that, you, that we'll be, you guys will be studying and sharing next, uh, next month on that, you know, in your, in your tables, everything like that. And we're going to do so together, amen? And I believe that we're going to grow together through it, and I'm really looking forward to what the Lord is doing and will continue to do. But what we're also going to do right now is we're just going to thank the Lord right now. Um, just we're going to do this in remembrance for all he's done for us and we're going to take communion together amen so we'll, amen. Jonah do you mind help out here at the communion and Vivian do you mind help out here at the communion thank you guys amen thank you guys appreciate that Did anybody else have anything to share or just input from all that we were talking about today? Amen. You still soaking it in? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, yeah I was just thinking uh, everything it tells you to do is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, yes. Be like, be angry, be selfish. <laughs> and then I realized that like, that's why you need God, that's Jesus, right. to get you through it. So all the things that it mentions is not easy to do, That's especially right. for the long, the long haul. That's right, amen. So, yeah, God help me. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's you know you say because. The reality is that's our nat that's our natural nature. Yeah, our default. That's, is yeah, true. it's not it's not hard to get angry. It's not hard to lie. It's not hard to cheat. It's not hard to you know to whatever all these different things. It just comes naturally to us. But that's what we need the supernatural to help us to overcome that. You know, and, and we may have seasons where we do great, but then there's seasons that, man, it's just a struggle, it's a battle. And, but again, it's because Christ is working that out. He's dealing with it. He's bringing some things to the surface. And it's not always pleasant for those around us when we have to go through it, but it's part of the process. You know, and we trust God through it, you know. And it's just the acknowledgement and the realization of it that, Lord, you're doing a work, amen? And this is why I need you, because in myself I can't do it, amen? So thank you for sharing that, brother. That's awesome. Yes, Brother Dennis. Partly why it's hard is because it's not in our nature. That's right. Eh? <laughs> it's not part of our nature. Yes. So we can't rely on our nature to change us. That's right. Amen. Amen. What does it say? The flesh brings death, right? The works of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but thank God for the work, the, the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Yeah. That's what we need him. But all the realities and all the different things that God is doing, you know what? He has been so faithful, amen? We're still standing today. We're still trusting today. We're still believing today, right, church? Amen. 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 And we're going to continue to walk by faith and not by sight? Yes. So today as we take communion is because we're remembering all that Christ did for us, the love that he has for us. 
the love that never changes and knowing that, God, you are faithful to the work that you were doing. And it's only because of that work that we're able to serve you today. We're able to, to, to declare who you are. We're able to share with others how good and great you are. And it's not from hiding, but just from rejoicing, being in his light and knowing that, God, we're going to trust you through it. So today as we take communion, we're just going to thank him today. Amen? Amen? Because this was the greatest example of love, was the love that he showed us through his son Jesus, dying for the sins of the world. Amen? Father, we just thank you today, Lord, as we take the bread today, Lord, as we take what was remembrance of the body that was prepared, the body that was given, because, Jesus, you took our sins, you took what we should have taken, Lord, you took the wrath upon your body for our sins, Lord, for our shortcomings, Lord, because, Lord, as was spoken today, Lord, those things come so naturally, Lord, but the things we know we're not supposed to do, Lord, as Paul said, I know the good I ought to do, but yet I do not do it. And the things I know I should not do or that I hate, I do them. But thanks be to God yes. who saved us, who died for us, who loves us, Lord. And today we do this in remembrance because we realize that, God, we can live this life. We don't have to live in our old man, our, own, our old person. Lord, we can live today in righteousness. We can live today in joy and peace and victory and freedom, Lord. Because of the price of, that you paid for us, Lord. And because of the gift that you've given us, Lord. And it's because of that sacrifice that we have grace today to serve you, Lord. To say yes to you and not to be afraid, Lord. To step out and to trust you and the call and the purpose for what you've saved us to do, Lord. So today, Father God, we take this in remembrance of that sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Take and eat. Lord, we take the cup today in remembrance of the blood that was shed for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the life that is in the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for washing us, for cleansing us, Lord. We thank you for the healing power that is in the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the washing and cleansing that is in the blood of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you today, Father God. Oh, that it is your love, my God, that has covered a multitude of sins, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the life that we have in you today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that nothing could ever change, Lord, the death that you took for us, Lord, as you were nailed to that cross, Lord. Lord, death has not just passed us over as it did in Israel, Lord. But, Lord, death has been swallowed up in the grave, Lord. Because of our faith in you today and because of the resurrection, Lord, we know that we have life in you today. And we are thankful that our names are written in your Lamb's book of life, Lord. And, Lord, we're standing and believing for those today that don't know you, Lord. That, Lord, as we do this in remembrance, it's because we know and remember that, Lord, you did this for the whole world, Lord. And you are that hope today that, Lord Jesus, this world needs, Lord. And we thank you that, Lord, you are patient and long-suffering, that none shall perish but all shall come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we just thank you, Lord, as we take and drink. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank all of you for today, for being a part, just for continuing to serve God, trusting God. And you know what? Let's continue to go forward. Amen. 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 Oh, let me pray for the tithes and offerings. I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in the tithes and offerings. Thank you for providing. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for taking care of your house and the work that you have called this house to do. Thank you, Father God, for taking care of our homes, our families, our finances, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that my God, Lord, we are not in lack today, Lord, because, Lord, our treasure is in you, Lord. And, Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, as you continue to provide, to provide for the work of the ministry, Lord. And we thank you for teaching us, Lord, the joy of giving, Lord. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for the freedom that we have today because we are no longer bound by our finances, Lord, but we are free, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, we know that everything belongs to you, Lord. So we just thank you, Father, for all your faithfulness, Lord, to this house and to the church today, Lord, to all the missionaries, to the evangelists, the prophets, the apostles, and 
Lord Jesus, to father many organizations, Lord, that are helping the homeless, Father, that are helping those that are sick, that are going to other countries, and even coming to our own country, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father God, for all the provisions that you are providing through your people, Lord, for the work of the ministry, Lord. And we thank you today, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you place them here in the box or at the Zal New Living Way Church Downey at gmail.com or on the website at the, the giving portion. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We still have a lot of, we still have some snacks here, so praise God.